Welcome everybody, this is SharePoint Patterns and Practices webcast and this time we're going to talk about how to build multi-view React client-side web parts with SharePoint Framework. We do have actually uh, done a pretty similar webcast in the past as well when we concentrated how to implement a multi-view uh, client-side web part using Angular 1.x. But this time we're going to actually have the exact same scenario but we're going to use the React as the, as the JavaScript library to implement that. Uh, my name is Vesa Yuvonen, I'm a senior program manager from SharePoint Engineering and with me today as the demo guard is Waldek. Waldek, will you do the intros? Yeah, sure. So, hi everybody, my name is Valdek Mastikas. I work at Rencor, I am an MVP and today I will be the dev dude showing you how to build multi-view React client-side web part with SharePoint Framework. That sounds really, really awesome. Before we actually go to the content itself, a quick intro on SharePoint Patterns and Practices. So SharePoint Patterns and Practices is owned by the SharePoint Engineering, but this is really open source initiative where we work together with community, MVPs and non-MVPs, people from a community to collect and provide guidance for everybody as a reusable samples, components, uh, um, uh, documentation, which you can use as a starting point for your customizations. So whatever you actually do on top of SharePoint in SharePoint on, on premises or SharePoint online, please have a look what we have uh, and we might actually have a great starting point for you to resolve your business uh, problem. And then you can take that existing sample, transform that to be available uh, based on the business requirements and implement your stuff on top of it. AKMS uh, SharePoint PMP is the one address to remember uh, where you can go and find the samples, the videos and everything else uh, from one uh, pretty long page. So, today's topic, we're going to talk about the considerations, uh, well, we're going to talk about the UI view, um, <laughs> multi-view uh, web part implementation in React. Um, this slide is actually exactly the same well, what we had uh, in the Angular webcast, because the considerations are exactly the same. So typically, if you implement, let's say, a classic single page application, you use the URL to track the status of the application. So you actually extend the URL with a hash and then uh, individual status codes. So you, your application knows where the end user is currently and what should I be showing uh, for the end user. And really the challenge is here is that when uh, you cannot use the URL because your web part or this application is hosted in SharePoint. You don't actually own the, the, the hosting surface because that's the SharePoint. Uh, so we need to use an alternative solution uh, to track the status. And really the technical solution itself uh, then depends on the library and JavaScript uh, framework that you're using. So there's a slightly different scenario and implementation style for Angular, slightly different scenario and implementation style for React, which we're going to see today, uh, and or Knockout or whatever you're actually using as your implementation platform. Anything you want to add there, actually, Baldek? So um, yes. Yeah, so on on that, while you could in theory um, manipulate lay the URL, you have to take into account that the web part is only one of the elements available on a page. Imagine that that you would use or you would add two instances of exactly the same web, 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 web part on a page. Then if you would change the URL, it would actually change the state for two of them. True. So that's exactly why you don't want to uh, uh, track the state via the URL because it, it, it might conflict with different states of different elements on the page, which is not the case if you build a spa that's the only thing that lives at a page. True. It's a single page application. It's a one page. Uh, and so you can actually track the status using URL. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Good. So the scenario today and for the React based implementation is actually exactly the same uh, what we implemented using Angular as well. So this is a classic poll, uh, polling web port uh, where we do have a one status where when the poll has not been yet configured. We have another status uh, whenever the question itself has been configured um, uh, when, and, and it's essentially the typical end user uh, seeing this web part and uh, well, the typical rendering of uh, for end users. And we're asking a status from the end users and then whenever you actually answer on that particular question, you will get the results as well. The implementation, just kind of a bit of a warning, uh, this particular fellow doesn't track if the end user has already responded uh, on the survey, it's going to re uh, reset itself automatically and all of that because we didn't intentionally implement anything complex on this one. It really concentrates on, on the key scenario. 
how would I control and how would I track the status of the web part without using the URL as the tracking mechanism. But I think the easiest way to understand how we can do that using React is to go to the actual demo. So let's actually uh, give the stage for Waldeck, and Waldeck is going to walk through the implementation. The code itself is available from our uh, PMP or SharePoint uh, repository uh, targeted for uh, SharePoint framework web parts. Uh, so the URL is there, and it's also available in the video notes. So you can actually go and pull down the sample and have a close look on how it actually works. So let's flip to demo and come back on the closing of the webcast. All right, so as we say, we, we want to sh sh show you how you can build a multi-view web part in React. So here we'll use exactly the same sample that we had a few weeks back in Angular. So here, let's add the web part to the page so that first you can see how it works. So we have the web part to the page, and that's the first state. We added the web part to the page, but we didn't say where the web part should get the data from, right? So that's the first state that you see. Then when we configure it and open the pane, we can add some additional options like um, favorite framework, poll description, And in this case, by the way, the, the list name itself, uh, it's not actually having a list of uh, lists from the SharePoint, but it's that's mainly because of simplicity of the code again. So exactly. we know that there exactly. is a list name called uh, framework poll. You can absolutely yeah. implement that there as well. But Yeah, yeah. So with, with that, we apply this. And when, when we do, that's another state. So imagine now that the web part is on a page. We set it up. And new user would come to the page, so that's the second state of the app that, that, that they would see, actually the poll, right? And when, when they vote, so here let's pick React because we're now doing things in React. And then when we vote, we will see another state, which are the results. So with that, we have three states of our app. We have the initial state, where the web part says that it, it's not, not ready to work yet. Then we have another state that shows the poll, and then third state, which is uh, the one that you see here, which is the one that shows the result. So let's have a look how we did that in code. All right, so here we see the code of a web part. And this is the web part class of, of the web part that you have seen on the page. Here we first start with the main component. And with, with the main React component that we add inside the web part. As you see, at this point, we always pass, pass main. The only thing that, that, that the web part knows is that it keeps track whether the config is already in place or not. So in other words, whether we already specified the name of the list or not, and title, right? And we pass that into our main component on the page. Now when we go to main, here is the first uh, state that we track. So if from the web part we got the the hint that we still need config, we will show the config component. Otherwise, we will go directly to the poll. And in our config component, we show the placeholder with with with, with the text uh, poll and icon. So basically, what we show is if we would go back to the page, and we would remove that one. So this is our first config view. So this is exactly this view here in code. And by the way, just a kind of a quick additional note on that one. The placeholder component is something which we're getting from the React components, right? Well, so actually it comes or from it's come SPFX. from the SPFX, yes, SPFX, exactly. Yes. Exactly. That's yes. a good point to understand as well. So you don't have to implement that UI that is actually there for you to exactly. take advantage. Exactly. Exactly. And um, and it will look exactly the same across all the web parts that you build, which is great, right? Yes. Because it will be exactly the same experience. Yep. Uh, um, and then if we go back to our main, so imagine that we would uh, um, set up the web part. So with that, we can actually go on and show the poll. So we switch to another component that we have here, which is poll. And the poll itself uh, consists of the two components, so or and two states. So first we have the questions, and then we have the results. So first, if you didn't vote yet, then we will show the poll, which is here called vote. 
right? And after you will vote, we will show the results, right? Because when you vote, you want to see the results. So in the vote, if we switch to that, we have our uh, component here that we use to get the questions from the list and show all of that. And then when we say here, when we go here, uh, select vote option, we actually keep the keep track of the state. Right? So here we, we trigger an event to which we subscribe here. And when we do that, uh, we say that we, 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 we have the vote and we actually should, should move on to results, which we show here and we would basically show the chart with all of the results that, that we have. So that's the easy way how to, how we keep track of, of the states. We use properties that we pass in between parts of our React app. And one note actually on the, if you go back on the poll on this one, so in this case there's the private method uh, voted. This one could actually read and check the situation from a cookie if the person has uh, voted on that one or however you would actually track the voting status. But in, again, yes. in this particular case, we, from a simplicity perspective, we wanted to keep it as simple as possible. Yes, and actually, so so here on this li li line here, we we check whether we should show the results or the poll based on the the, the state, right? Yeah. But as you you said, we could read that from profile, from cookie, from a list, from anything that we we can um, in order to. Uh, so if you would like to have the um, these. Uh, uh, s Scenario in, in, in place when you, when you can only vote once, then this would be exactly the place where we would add that check. So yeah, here you exactly. would read it this, this from, from a list, cookie, or any other place, pass that into this variable, and then use that to show either the poll or the results. Yeah. Cool. Quite simple. Yep. Uh, it's it's more around the, the property checking and and based on the statuses. Uh, but we're not using any React routers or anything like that, which exactly. could be then the exactly. URL based tracking. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I think that's it uh, for that particular case. There's a lot of stuff which we could actually talk about uh, in here, but let's not actually let's concentrate on the main topic of the of the day. So let's flip back on the slides and close up the webcast. Good. And let's actually sum up the webcast itself. So relatively fast webcast. And if you watch what we did with the Angular one, you can actually see that the content itself is pretty much the same. The challenge is exactly the same. The key difference here is that because we're using React or Angular, the actual implementation style is slightly different. Um, and that's also presented in the, in the available samples from the GitHub. Anything you want to add as a final word in uh, words, uh, Waldeck, on this one? Yeah, so uh, the approach that we chose here uh, is a, a, actually on purpose to show that two different ways how you would do it in Angular and how you would do it in React. The good thing is that the approach that we chose uh, now in React, you could use very similar approach in Angular because if you think about it, um, between Angular 1 and Angular 2, Angular 2 moves more towards the same approach where, where you actually componentize the whole app. So you could use very similar approach to the one that we used in React, also in, in Angular, when you wouldn't use the UI router that, that we had initially, but you would use similar approach where you show and hide pieces of your app depending on the state that, that, that you track internally in your app. Absolutely makes sense. Good note. Good, uh, good additional notes as well. But I think that sums up the webcast. So thank you, Waldek, uh, once again on uh, on the demo skills and demo guard and the sample implementation as well. And we'll come up with a new webcast sooner or later. Thank you. Bye.